Hi, I'm Bryce Hardy and welcome to Octane, the show that gets to know the people that live, breathe and work all things automotive industry in Australia. Tonight we'll get to meet our first three automotive enthusiasts who all own and operate their own small businesses. We'll find out how they got started, why they love what they do and what they think the future holds for the rev heads across the country. Up first we'll head to Geelong to meet Paul and the team at European Affair. Enjoy. My name's Paul Lockman. I'm the owner of European Affair. I'm a full-time mechanic and part-time office administrator. I have an assistant in the office to help me with daily bookkeeping and uh, invoicing. I started my apprenticeship in the end of 1980 after I completed year 11 at school and um, had a passion for lawnmower motors, motorbikes and so forth leading up to that. I remember starting my apprenticeship with Volvo and back then uh, my first year was pretty well cleaning up the workshop and keeping it all tidy and assisting mechanic but only after everything was spotless so they're my early memories. Sweeping workshop floors. <laughs> when I started work for Volvo as an apprentice who was involved in Victorian Australian Rally Championship so I got involved in building his rally cars from engines, gearboxes, diff, suspension, even down to roll cage work. And that set me off on a path of motorsport, which I pretty well retired from about 15 years ago. That was the beginning of my automotive beginning. I was working in Melbourne, had been working for Alfa Romeo, Citroen and Fiat in uh, North Melbourne. And I got sick of the traveling up and back. And a friend of mine had a small business just on the outskirts of Geelong and I went into business with him. Uh, for a couple of years, I then started up uh, what is now European Affair, but it started off as Paul Lockton Automotive and Newtown Prestige, and that was in about 94. That then moved premises to bigger premises and moved into European Affair, which it has been since the early 2000s. It always starts at the top from the boss being myself, and that's my passion for not just being a motor mechanic, but for European cars. I love the technology of them, the advancements of them. What I saw in our development of motorsport cars at world level, about eight to 10 years later, ends up in the cars that we work on today in the workshop. I think when I was younger, and I'm 54 now, and considering I started when I was 16, it was just hard work and dedication to the job, and you had to have a passion for it then, which is the same passion I have today for it, we eat, sleep and um, work on them every day. Uh, even, some guys seem to think, come in the next day, if we've got a problem, go, I had a dream about this last night and I think we need to do this. So they're taking their work home with them as well. But I think it's our passion for the job and we love it. Yes, I have a key person who works in the office, does a lot of the quoting, Tyson. He's um, a brilliant man. He says he's the... Uh, I'm the owner and he's the boss and that's very true because he does manage all the staff in the workshop. We have pretty well seven full-time staff, keeps him very busy but he needs me out here to keep check of quality control and the jobs are getting done. Oh, from minor and major servicing, engine rebuilding, transmission, a lot of the transmissions are electronics now so we do all electronic work on the transmission, differentials in manual gearboxes, uh, suspend, all the suspension work, all the electronic work revolving around even suspension, brakes, just the whole cars in general, we do it all in-house. Dealerships today can be too big and people can get lost in the dealership network, whereas we have a personal touch, uh, we have a personal interest in what's going on in their life and if you consider that a car is the next big investment other than a house, um, it's, it's a priority in people's lives and working for just general Every day running around, they need something that's reliable and we can provide that. I think our customers like that we always try and do the right thing by them, always try and get them a better deal, always try and make sure that we're resolving any issues they've got and uh, working to resolve, you know, to sort out their needs. So every customer is different in that way as to what their needs are. Another thing we do that they love is when their car is serviced here, if they have a, a blown globe, a tail light, or a brake, or an indicator globe, we replace it free of charge. And they just swing by in between servicing. So we make sure everything's spot on for them. And I hate seeing cars going down the road with only one brake light or one headlight. So it's 
it's important to us and it's important to the customer their car's safe and roadworthy. Oh, I think uh, being a small business and starting off with um, just two of us in a workshop to being in business about 27 years in total is a success story in itself. You, you don't stay in business if you're not doing something right and we strive all the time to be better and better and be different to the next workshop along the road and we even take it up to the dealers. Uh, that we try and do a better job than the manufacturers can do. So, and our customers, our customers love that that we are uh, a dealer alternative. The Cambridge Dictionary defines whisperer as someone who can control or train a certain type of animal by using voice or gentle body movements. Next up. We're going to head to the other side of the bay so we can meet Matt and the boys at Car Whisperer. Nice beast. Gentle. Yeah, my name's Matthew Healy. I'm the owner and uh, manager of Car Whisperer in Hastings. Basically, Car Whisperer started from scratch, so we, uh, we moved to, to the area and decided to start afresh. Um, yeah, so we began the business from the ground and uh, have built it up over the last eight years uh, into a quite a successful little business. The first thing I remember was um, helping my dad fix cars. I used to, when I was about five I think, I remember being out there and handing him all the tools while he's laying under the car. So when I was quite young I always loved working on, on the cars and uh, even when I got my first car it was an older one and uh, you know, I was happy to um, work on it and restore it. So that was the very beginning and uh, it's just blossomed from there. My partner Diane, uh, she looks after all the, the office side of things, answering the phone and invoicing and uh, yeah, we run a quite a good little operation. Well I think the most important thing with any business is to be uh, as open and honest with your customers as you can be. So, you know, what we do is we make sure that our customers know uh, what has to be done. There's never any surprises. We do the best we can for them and uh, make sure that they're happy at the end of the day and they've got a, a good vehicle to go home in. Well, we pretty much do everything. So we look after all sorts of cars, European, Australian, American, Asian, so it's, there's nothing, no job too big, too small. We're, we try and make sure that everybody's looked after and uh, you know, everybody's happy with what gets done. We do make sure that, that there's no surprises when we're doing any jobs for them. We'll uh, let them know what's got to be done up front and if there's anything that changes during the job, we let them know so that there's uh, no nasty surprises at the end, so they're, they're, they're always very appreciative and happy with that. We tend to try and make sure that if anybody comes in with a problem that uh, no one else has been able to fix, we'll make sure that we, uh, we get to the bottom of it. One of, the, one of the best things that we ever did was um, uh, one of our customers had uh, an older BMW 5 Series that uh, it had issues with for a long, long time. I uh, persevered and persevered and ended up tracking it down to a, uh, an ABS module in the center, under the centre console that was shorting out every time he accelerated. It took a bit of, a bit of uh, working out but got there in the end and he was very happy. Even though it was an older car, he loved it. So he was uh, glad that it was going again. Most favourite is I've got a couple of old cars and uh, just restoring them. Uh, it's it's nice it's nice to be able to sort of step out of a pace at home and and work on things at your own pace instead of you know everything's always rush 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 to, to get it finished. Whereas uh, you can do that sort of stuff at home at your own leisure and uh, uh, it's probably the most important thing I suppose is having something to work on of your own keeps things interesting and you know, you've got something nice to drive afterwards. Uh, well, I think probably the most important thing is actually enjoying what you do. That and attention to detail, you know, making sure you you do you know what you're doing and that you uh, do it carefully and also um, 
uh, making sure that uh, everything's done properly. Probably the most important success story uh, today would be the fact that you know I've managed to build up a, uh, a successful business with my wife, and uh, and we enjoy what we're doing, and uh, it's all going really well. So it's probably the, the best one of all. There's plenty of people out there that you know may think about uh, starting their own business but never really do it. My uh, my encouragement to them is to give it a go, you know, because you never know unless you try. And uh, you know, if you're interested in doing it, you can always make a good go of it, and you know, hopefully, become successful. Hi, I'm Peter King, and I'm the dealer principal of King's Cars. Well, King's Cars started back in 2003, and we started in a disused factory down in Ballarat. And from there, we've grown um, over the years to be in Hamilton, Ararat, Geelong, with six showrooms, seven workshops, and 150 staff. In a typical dealership, it's quite varied. There's essentially five businesses in one. So within our workshops, we have service advisors who meet and greet the customers. We have our technicians and our workshop controllers who work on the vehicles. And at the end of the day, we wash, clean and detail the car prior to its going home. Uh, and then we have our service managers that make sure that all works. But they work in with our other departments too, making sure vehicles are going out for new car deliveries. When vehicles are arriving into store, they get them ready and presented. Um, so everyone works hand in gloves. We, we avoid hierarchies within our business. We don't believe in having all these separate titles and everything. We like to have a business that's very fluid. Started with drive away pricing before it was mandated. Uh, we're a commission free dealer. We don't pay our sales staff commission, which is one of our only two, I think, in Australia. Um, and also here at Westfield, we've shown our innovation by setting up uh, a showroom here at Westfield, which is being used and copied. Uh, internationally so you know we're, we're prepared to back ourselves and innovate and it's all about what is best for the customer yeah well it's not just a showroom uh, display there's interactive where people can actually touch screens they can build up a car they can buy a car here and finance a car and also whilst they're here they can have their car serviced in that they can drop the car off we have test drive bays here and we take out the cars from here service them and return them washed, ready for the customer whilst they're still shopping. And we put the control back into the customer's hands where all the pricing is shown, uh, everything's interactive, everything's transparent. Oh, we've had a lot of success stories. We've won awards, but awards mean, what, you know, mean something, some recognition, but it's mainly probably seeing our staff develop. We've had staff that are developed as apprentices through to general managers. But also probably our success stories are seeing customers grow and develop through our business as well. They may have come in when they were younger buying a smaller car and now they've gone to an SUV, they've got kids and, and their lifestyle's changed. And a number of our customers being business people have seen with one car and they've grown their fleet and they've grown like we've grown. So it's been great to be part of that journey as well. Being in country towns, we often see our customers, we might be out getting groceries and we'll see them. Um, we've been to funerals. We've known a number of our customers that have passed away. My wife particularly, Angela, you know, she's always had this connection with the customers. So, you know, they'll come in and they'll, they'll tell your life story. Usually it's a very big purchase for people and they're a bit apprehensive. Um, but our environment's so relaxed that people are comfortable to talk. And from there they realise that we're about ongoing relationships and development. It's not just selling something and here today, gone tomorrow. It's, it's a really it's a real journey that we've been on with our customers and they have with us. And first of all, you've got to diagnose if there is a concern with the vehicle. And you now we've got two ears and one mouth and we should use them in equal proportion. And it's firstly to listen and listen to the customer's concerns. But also for a mechanic, they need attention to detail and need to be systematic in their approach. So uh, a mechanic that's very organised and very systematic. Yeah, uh, my earliest memory involving cars is probably going back when we used to travel from Victoria up to Queensland and back then the rules were very uh, relaxed, no seat belts, 
And so we'd have a station wagon and my parents would drive through the night and we'd be asleep in mattresses in the back. No two days are the same. We always have funny stories. And one that springs to mind with me was a customer in Ballarat. Uh, it was bleak Saturday one day and this customer had come in every Saturday just walking around, looking at cars, never wanting really any help, just looking. And I'm sure a lot of retail businesses get that, you know, the, the regular visitor. And one weekend it got the better of me. And I said, would you like to go on a test drive? And he said, oh, are you sure? I said, yeah, that'd be great. You know, I'll take you, you know. And I really regret doing that because the guy couldn't drive at all. And I spent most of the time clutching onto the side of the car as he drove through dirt and, and gravel and nearly lost the car so many times. So I got back white and uh, we never offered him a test drive again. We're a first generation family business. It was my wife that together we've worked side by side in a business the whole time. Um, and she manages all the customer relations, all the sales departments. Uh, she's, a, she's a real driving force in our business. And since then, uh, she's developed the culture. It's a much used word culture, but she has de developed it within the business. And also now our children are coming through. So we've got two actively working in the business and a third working part-time. Back ourselves and see success has been uh, most satisfying. I guess, uh, I wouldn't call it a hobby, but looking after my kids, test, um, teaching them how to drive. Thankfully, we've got three kids, I've only got one to go. And uh, yeah, no wonder I've got no hair. Um, I think every parent could probably share that with me. Um, it's not the most favourite thing, but um, unfortunately uh, my wife uh, refuses to do it, so I'm the one doing it now. Thanks to Peter from King's Cars in Geelong. Tonight's three guests have all had one thing in common, a passion for cars and the bits and pieces that go into making them and keeping them running. Tune in next week for a brand new episode of Octane where we'll meet three more equally passionate small business owners. Remember, you can catch up on more Octane on Channel 31's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to be a part of the show, drop us a line on the details below. See you next week.